Good morning. And Happy New Year. Good to see you here this morning as we've come for one singular purpose, and that is to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go to him in, in praise. Jesus, we come to praise you. We come to depend on you. We come to, to hear from you. And as you said so many times, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Give us those ears we ask today. As we praise you, as we fellowship, as we hear your word, for you want your church to know you and to share you. We pray in your name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our first song, To God Be the Glory. Next song is My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
us greet one another. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Don't distract the sound man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, wanted to share uh, just some opportunities. Um, and I, I want to start off with a prayer request that I just, I just heard before. Rick Kirby, who would praise the Lord, praise the Lord, as he played his bass, as he sang Kenner in the choir, he is now doing that face to face with Jesus as he passed this morning. A dear friend to our church and our community. He has been out due to physical and mental issues. Very good to see you here. We mourn with you. So, but you know when we were praising, I praised that much more, okay? He's doing great. Let me pray. Jesus, for the one who has been such a vital person, even though these last few years, um, due to his, his, his wife's health before her passing, um, and then his health, but one who was neck deep in children's ministry here and in the music ministry here, and was such an encourager to so many, uh, especially me. Um, I thank you that he sees you face to face and how he praises you now. It is a loss to our church and has been since he couldn't be here. But to know he's with you brings us tears of joy. Amen. Amen. And I know that's particularly hard for all of y'all, too. Um, let's talk about things to do. <laughs> um, uh, just to let the church council, uh, we're meeting right after the worship service in the fellowship hall. So uh, 
uh, and one of the reasons is um, one more week before disciple life begins. Um, ladies, um, j just to let you know, we're waiting for you. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, want to give you time to study the next chapter, chapter five on Hannah. So, um, so you will be ready, and then we will start our disciple life uh, next Sunday evening at six o'clock. Um, uh, the offering envelopes, uh, most of you got them, but uh, they're on a back bench there. Um, if you don't ha normally don't get one, uh, there's a blank box. We just need to know what number you, you took, and uh, uh, that way we can communicate that uh, to our financial secretary. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, for those who have been interested in the youth mission trip um, to West Virginia, going to the city of Huntington, I had to wait for it to roll over. I was thinking the wrong name. Um, uh, we need to have your deposits. It says today. Today I need to know whether you're going or not so that we know what we need to send uh, um, later this week. So um, please get up with uh, Sharon or Candy and uh, uh, regarding, regarding that. Um, and also regarding that, what, what helps us, and, and, and this church has been so generous, uh, one, it's good. We all need to eat anyway. Let's, let's see. But, but the donations that you have given uh, has been a great help in youth and adults being able to go on these trips. So next week, chili. And if you don't like chili, hot dogs. And if you like chili on your hot dogs, great. So uh, that's next week. Uh, I, I also enjoy just the time of fellowship after the service together as we sit around the table. So again, that's next week. Um, in a couple Thursdays, if I, my dates are right, um, we have um, the, the, the so association has Senior Adult Lunch and Learn. It's going to be at Dudley Shoals, but they do need to know by this week. I believe that is Friday, registered by Friday the 12th, so um, uh, let them know if you can be a part of that on the 19th. And then... Um, uh, I wasn't here last week, but I do need to know uh, if you would like to join uh, me going to the Casual Work Week, which is March 10th through the 15th, I need to know because that fills, it may have already have been filled up, but uh, uh, please let me know today because um, again, uh, you can let me know in a couple weeks, but most likely it'll be filled if it hasn't already. So it's a great week to be able to invest uh, in a great ministry of our state convention. Um, and uh, so, so again, it's a lot of yard work. It's a lot of, you know, uh, out there, but it's also just a good retreat as well. So, um, and then uh, again, just, I put this, this is in your bulletin as well. Uh, this was almost one of those Sundays where you had to call, but I was glad that the weather was a little earlier so that there wasn't any question about uh, about the service uh, this week um, so those are just those are some opportunities we don't want you to miss um, and then prayer needs and obviously I mentioned and I don't have it up here because I found out just before the service um, but uh, prayer needs um, when I was here a couple weeks ago and again I appreciate Doug for you filling in on this part of, of, of the service and, and, and Dave especially uh, in, in giving uh, God's word um, to, your pe to, to his people. Um, but uh, a couple weeks ago, things were not good. Um, there was an infection and all that, but things have cleared up. There's been some drainage tubes that have been working and now are removed, removed, and it's a good thing. But uh, the doctors removed one, and then baby Emery decided to move the, remove the other. But everything's going well. So that just gives you a little, she's a fighter. So um, uh, Charles, it's good to see you without anything on that hand. Uh, we'll just keep praying for you on, on that. I know Wanda as well. Uh, you know, how, she's like, how did Charles make it easy? Yeah, how come? <laughs> she's given... <laughs> Um, and then um, please pray for Roger Goble this week. He, uh, they sent him to hospice. Um, and uh, so please pray for him and pray for the family uh, at, at this time. Um, and then um, Denise, um, uh, Mike, your sister-in-law, will keep praying for her. She started, it has started the treatments. Okay, so just keep her in prayer. Um, and then... 
Alan, and the only reason I put in is because I didn't want it to do a second line. Uh, we needed every line, but uh, you have uh, that carpal tunnel nerve surgery the 17th, which is a week from Wednesday, something like that, but uh, uh, our prayers for you. Um, and uh, Craig, good to see you here. You have good days, you have bad days. So I'm glad you're good enough to be here. So uh, I will keep praying for you. And then this week, and we've been praying for like the last three months leading up to this, but uh, Barbara finally is getting that hip replacement. Uh, that is this Thursday. Um, and so please keep her in prayers. Quite a, a procedure that she's going to go in time of rehab. Um, I also ask for prayer. And, and even hey, if you want to volunteer, if you're not normally there Wednesday, Wednesdays you know, but uh, she is the one who heads up our children's ministry and we're, we're getting sign up for, for people to, to uh, uh, fill in in this time of, of healing. But uh, so let me know, but just pray, pray for that ministry on, on Wednesday nights uh, for our children. And uh, we, we, are, we are getting it filled uh, week by week um, so that that continues. Uh, Faye mentioned to me this morning her son-in-law, Lee, um, is uh, having heart issues and is having tests. When, when are those tests? To schedule the tests. Okay. Okay, all right, just pray for, for Lee in, in this. Um, and then uh, the family of Eve Evelyn Lipford, as well as, again, I mentioned earlier, Rick Kirby. Um, I also have a praise, but I'm going to let Charles share it. I need a lot of, she needs a lot of sympathy and pray for her. Today is our 30th wedding. <laughs> Congratulations, 30 years of marriage, Charles and Nikki. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Other prayer needs or praises? Okay, right here and then there. Yes, Sandy. I have a prayer for uh, my uh, attendance will bother me. <coughs> be six, uh, uh, to to and it up. Wow, that's great. That's great. My mother in law's house was. I know there are some who, who, who have been through that or know those in family that have been through that, and it, it, it is very traumatizing. So we will pray for um, Bentley. Bentley. Okay. Mainly, my family live in this period that's having cancer surgery in two weeks. All righty. Okay. Let's go to our Savior in prayer. And Jesus, you are the one who is God with us. it's like in the loss of a loved one. But you also know you are the resurrection and the life for all who believe. And all these things we pray. We pray for the comfort only you could bring we pray for the Lipford family and we pray for the Kirby family. Jesus, we, we come and just thank you that baby Emery is, is doing better but knowing there's more ahead. Father, we, we pray uh, for, for Mike's uh, sister-in-law, Denise, and and uh, Father, help her as she is going through these treatments. Father, we, we pray for Barbara as she um, 
has this surgery this week and that you will prepare her um, and, and, and just protect her leading up to the surgery, in the surgery, and the following uh, recovery time. And I pray for Eddie in this. I pray as he is there to help her and take up things that she would normally do, um, uh, give him the strength and encouragement as he tends to her needs. Uh, Father, I, I pray for Alan and, and the surgery that he is awaiting in a, in a couple weeks. Uh, again, help him as he prepares for this. Jesus, uh, we pray um, for, for Neely uh, that uh, with this cancer surgery, uh, we pray, Father, for Roger at hospice and, and, and the rest of his family at this time. We pray for Lee as he uh, goes through tests. Help them to determine exactly what is going on with his heart. And Father, we, we come for things that are beyond a physical need, uh, in this case, a, an emotional need, the tra being traumatized uh, with this experience of a home break-in. We pray for Bentley. We pray for the family um, as um, the recovery from that. Let him find and look to you for your peace. And Father, for the praises, uh, we, we thank you for Sandy and just the relief there and the, the tendons. We, we, we rejoice with a 30th anniversary with Charles and Nikki. And, and Father, uh, if we would take time to think about it, um, we would spend the rest of this service giving you praise for the things you have done. And as we sang earlier, to you be the glory. We pray in your name. Amen. Oh, 
as the choir makes their way down. We'll have our children uh, meet over here as they dismiss for children's worship. Let me pray with y'all. And Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for seeing uh, the children here. I know there's been a lot of sicknesses around and glad that uh, they're back. Um, but uh, I pray, I pray in this time that they would hear your word. They would hear your, your voice speaking to them. Jesus, how you so welcome children and said, we must come, become as one. Um, let them know your truth. Let them know you. I pray in your name. Amen. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. The words of Isaiah from chapter 6. In the year King Uzziah died, King Uzziah was one of the longest reigning monarchs of, of Judah. And, and after having one who's been there not just, you know, five years or ten years or twenty years, but, but over fifty years, and, and, and now it's like, now what? What's going to happen? What's the next king going to be like? What's going to happen with the name? All these things were going on in their minds of going, what's it going to be like? And Isaiah goes to the temple and sees what's important. I saw the Lord. Seated high on his throne, his train filling the temple. Now listen, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what is going on in your family life, your work life, the church life, he is on the throne. He is in charge. But so many times we don't get what Isaiah got. And it's so easy to look everywhere else but the real solution. You know, this has been bugging you, hasn't it? Okay, Randy, Focus, focus, okay? You know, this is off. This is wrong and stuff like that. And, and I was preparing this message. And, and uh, just to let you know, I was like, this message was being prepared before Christmas. And I'm like, oh, rats, I got to wait through Christmas to be able to do this. You know, so, so um, uh, I, I'm excited to, to get into, it's just a, a series in this month of January where we can look at what our focus should be. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can need focus, okay? There's a lot of eyesight problems um, that, that, that we all have and, and, and stuff. Uh, and so you, you have things like, you know, okay, let's go with the big one, blindness. Listen, if you do not know Christ, you're spiritually blind. You need the one who makes the blind to see to reach out to you. You need to call out to him. There's things that are called cataracts. Hey, raise your hand. Anybody go through cataracts? 
you know, wow, half the audience. That's a lot more than did um, cross stitch. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, if you had to, you had to go back to that message. Uh, but uh, anyway, half of y'all, raise your hand. Listen, last time I went to the to the eye doctor, and I don't go very often because you know I, I don't like to pay that much. But anyway, um, you know, they said you're having, you have cataracts. It's not to the point you need it, but I tell you what, I'm at the, I mean, I don't, lights don't go bright enough, you know? <laughs> you need more light, more light, more light, more light, and you know, uh, and stuff like that. So, so, so there's issues of, there's something in the way of you seeing clearly who you need to see. Astigmatism. I've been, that's, that's why I finally got these. It's, it's when my eyes were young, they were round. And they're drooping, you know. Now, listen, I got other parts drooping too. But anyway, but, but uh, so the eyes droop, so their things get unfocused, warped vision. Listen, it's easy to get off focus because you're so focused on this area, but missing another area. <laughs> Presbyopia. Anybody here got presbyopia? All right, you know what presbyopia means? Old eyes. <laughs> so I appreciate you willing, willing to raise that hand. It means old eyes. Guess what? That's what the bottom part of my glasses do for me because I can't read up close. I can only see far away. And listen, you need to have both. You need to be able to see the big picture as well as being able to focus on the immediate around. But listen, sometimes if you're only focusing on the nearsighted part, which you can see up close, you're thinking, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? If you only have that far-sighted, sometimes you can't see the present way God is providing. So there's a lot of different things of vision and vision of not being able to see, not being able to focus. Uh, I think of what God's Word says in, in Proverbs, verse part of chapter, uh, of verse 18 of chapter 29. Now, now uh, the King James is kind of one of my favorite ways of putting it, but where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you're not focused, if you're not getting the right way, the NIV puts it in, in a different way. Uh, it says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Well, which one's right? Yes. Um, you know, they, they both are conveying a truth that, it, that is there. Uh, and this truth is illustrated in a, in a situation that happened in Exodus um, 32. When Moses went up the mountain, when the leader went up the mountain, and he and God were having a wonderful conversation in time for about 40 days. But the people weren't seeing God. Oh, they were hearing. And so they went to Aaron. We need a God we can see. And they made the golden calf. And just this one passage here says this. Moses came back down and he says, saw that the people were running wild. That's that word perish or casting off restraint. Um, and that Aaron had led them, let them get out of control and so become a laughing stock to their enemies. This is what happens when we are not focused on what we need to be focused. We go here, there, we get distracted and all that. And listen, listen, we as a church... Need focus. We need focus. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at our focus. We're going to look at Jesus, our sole focus. That, that's today. That we're going to be looking at what was Jesus' focus? What did he focus on? And then the last two Sundays in January, Jesus' focus for us, what does he want us focusing on? And some of that is, is, is you, know, you know, we need, listen, we need this first part. We, we need what we're going to be studying today, Jesus, our focus. Because, listen, if Jesus is not our focus, we're going to go in the wrong direction. We're going to be casting off restraint. 
We're going to go, let's try here, let's try here, let's try there. Listen, listen, there's a lot of churches that substitute Jesus with a program. Or substitute Jesus with a, a personality. There's, yeah, you got to have a person. <laughs> And yes, programs aren't bad in themselves, but our trust, our focus is to be on Christ. We will be talking in this month about areas that, yes, we do need to have a better program. Yes, we do need to be going in certain directions. So trust me, I am not ignoring that. But we need to start with keeping our eyes on Jesus. Let me read this passage. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Join me in prayer. Jesus, we all have issues going on in our life. Friendships, work, family. Help us fix our eyes on you. Jesus, we have issues here at King's Creek. And we could focus on the problems. And God, we do need to look at some of the issues and how our best settled. But Jesus, we start with you because not only are we to fix our eyes on you, it's about helping others to fix their eyes on you. Whether they be in a nursery or a child's classroom or an adult classroom or in a discipleship setting or a person who's never heard the gospel. So help us today to fix our eyes on you. I pray in your name. Amen. In this passage, it's a picture of a race. A picture of a race. In a race, at least I hope this is the case, you know where you're going. <laughs> There's a finish line. There's something that you're, you're aiming to. And as long as you're aiming there and staying in that direction, you will finish the race. So to run the race, this passage of Scripture says, how do we run the race that, that we are to run? And that's just an, a, an illustration of our life as believers in Christ. One, we need encouragement. We need encouragement. He says this, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses. Now, now in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, um, it, it has just been a lot of time of, look at all these people of faith. Look how they trusted God. Because this church that, that, that um, the, the writer of Hebrews was addressing was, was a church that some of them, because it was getting hard, were getting ready to quit. So, so look at those who have run the race. But I'd like to bring it this way as well. We need to look at one another as well. We need to encourage one another in the race. We should be rooting for one another, not hindering. We should be picking one another up, not nitpicking. Because we need encouragement. Earlier in the book of Hebrews, it said this, let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds, that we need to be each other's greatest cheerleader. Way to go, 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 go. Now, again, this is not saying it's them, but it's Christ through them. We need to consider 
how we can spur one another on. Because to run the race, listen, if we feel that we're alone, guess what we're going to do? We're going to drop out. We need to know we're not alone. This is why, one of the reasons why we come together. This is not just to be, be something that you come and, and sing a few songs and, and, and hear a message. Those, all those things are important, but we need the interaction and the relationships of one another to encourage each other. So to run the race, we need encouragement. To run the race, we need, this is not a fun thing, discipline. Discipline. It's too easy to, to quit. It's too easy to focus on the wrong things. And so the writer here says this, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And so we're going to be looking at how we need discipline to shed the non-essentials, those things, that, that anything that hinders, and also to shed the entanglements. So I'm going to take one at a time here for, for the non-essentials. Listen, listen, it could be good things. It could be good things. I, I think about the, the Olympics are going to be, you know, uh, this, this coming summer and, and all that. And one of the things that's fascinated me for the past several is what they wear. <laughs> you know, let me just go to the, the, the swimmers and stuff like that. I mean, they wear these swimsuits that are just form-fitting. They, they try to put, you know, I don't know what they do, to, but they make it so that there's no drag or anything. They, they and, and this is something, this is, you know, I remember thinking, you know, I used to swim a lot and stuff like that, but I never was on the swim team because those guys shaved their legs. And I just like, oh, man, I ain't going to do that, you know. But, but it was like shave the legs, shave the body, so, you know, put the cap on or shave the head so there, there's no drag, nothing hindering you. And I'm like, wow. So I didn't, I didn't join the swim team. But the discipline to say, what's hindering my run? It could be a good thing. See, it's not the bad that keeps us from our best. It can be, but, but it's not only the bad, but it is doing good instead of doing the best. Again, nothing wrong with hobbies and sports and some entertainments and all that. But when our lives get full of that, we're drug down in the race. It could be good things. A good thing replacing the best thing. It could be bad things that happened. It could be a past trauma or event that, that always keeps to come back, that, 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 that you you're, you're feel fearful or whatever. Or it could be a, a relationship uh, that, that's not right and it keeps dragging you down. It, it could be a, relation, a current relationship that uh, is keeping you from, from, uh, from discouraging. It keeps you discouraged in the race. And so we're to shed the non-essentials, but then we're also to shed the entanglements. It says, in the sin that so easily entangles. The imagery there was, again, the, the Olympic-type events that were there. Now, now, for a Jew, you know, they, they, they kept their clothes on um, and stuff like that. But if a Jew had to run, they, they, they also wore robe-like things. And if you ran with a robe, um, you know, you would trip. And, and that's where the phrase, gird up your loins, uh, comes from, is where they would take all of that and they'd kind of take and tuck it in here. Look like a diaper, you know, but their legs were ready to run, you know, something like that. Listen, I'd rather do that than what the, um, the Greek Olympians did. They just shed everything so that they could run and I just, yeah, anyway, don't even go there and, and stuff like that. But again, they're just saying, listen, listen, I don't want things to trip me up. And it stays specifically and the sin and so it doesn't just say a sin or many sins. What is that sin that keeps coming back? 
What is that sin that keeps tripping you up? Listen, this goes back to we need encouragement. If there's something that keeps coming back in you, you need to find some trusted believers to be able to say, this is an area I need prayer for. How do we strip off the sin in our relationship with God? It sounds easy. <laughs> If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, forgive us to, will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But the hard part is confessing, saying, God, I agree with you. This is sin. I need it out of my life. And the next part follows, and that would be repentance, a turning away from. And you know what? It takes discipline. But you know what? When you say no, God steps in to help you say no. But guess what? That may be for the next five minutes, and then you've got to say no again. And then you need to say no again. We need discipline to, sh to, to shed the non-essentials and that which entangles. We need discipline to persevere. It, it says this, let us run with perseverance the race. I mean, it says run, not walk, not stroll, not jog. Listen, I, I, I used to run a lot and stuff like that. Now my knees say, no, you aren't, you know, and, and stuff like that. And so I walk. I try to walk as fast as possible. But listen, it was nothing compared to when I was running and the effort and stuff like that. Now, it also says with the per perseverance, it's not easy. You want to quit. You want to stop. It's going to be hard. And it says the race, the Greek word, you know, we get the word agony from. A contest that requires intense struggle. It wasn't just used about for racing. It was used in wrestling as well and, and, and all of these other things. Now, I remember back in 1998 as, as uh, the, the former pastor um, uh, of this church shared um, uh, uh, back in the 1900s. Um, the, uh, uh, I ran a half marathon. And it was just, for me, just starting. Okay, I'm going to do this. After I did that, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a whole marathon. I'm going to do one of those triathlons. Oh, yeah, stuff like that. Anyway, no, I didn't. Um, and, uh, but but, but in, in, in preparing for that, in, in preparing for that, um, you know, it, it took a lot of discipline. It took me running, you know, to run 13.1 miles. Um, I actually trained by doing 16 miles. And, and, and stuff like that. And, and um, um, again, uh, that's one reason why I don't run today because my knees say, no more, you've done your limit. Um, but one of the things about the race was this, um, and this was more for the, the 26 milers, you know, but every two miles they had a water station. It wasn't just water, it was some, you know, sometimes it's Gatorade there or, or even some power bars or whatever and stuff like that. And, and he's going, you know, listen, listen, <laughs> You can go two miles. You don't need a cup of water. You know, and you just keep on going and go back. Yeah, four miles. Come on. That's, 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 a, you know, that's a daily run if you're training for that. That's, that's, a no, that's nothing. And you go four miles. You can go six miles and all that. And easily just say, listen, listen. If you wait till you need the water, it's too late. It's called dehydration. And there's no way of getting it back while running enough. You get cramping. Now, what are the water stops? Listen, right now you're in a water stop. <laughs> where you're hearing the word and hearing of Jesus, the water of life. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, the word is proclaimed. Ah, I just missed one. I, okay, but listen, we go on and on and on. And guess what? One day you're going to be spiritually dehydrated. 
<laughs> Sunday school class. Can I hear amen, Charles? <laughs> Listen, one of, this is one of those areas we're going to be working on, so it's for every age group. Every small group. Every, every opportunity. It may be a phone call that somebody has, or maybe you call somebody. All of these things that, that God will have in our lives, that somebody just, you know, you met at the store and just what they shared with you or something on the radio that you heard or something. Listen, all of these things are things are so we don't get spiritually dehydrated. This takes discipline to persevere because we've skipped the water stops. We need discipline, lastly, to stay on track. It says, the, the race that is marked out for us. That means God has something specific for you. Here's the question. What is God's path for me? What is God's path for me? What is the specific in the way that he spiritually gifted you and the experiences that you've had and the opportunities that are before you? God, what is your path for me today? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to be involved in? What is your path for me? Where does he want me to run? Now listen, we get off course when we start comparing tracks. We start going, yeah, but, but I like that. that that's, I like that position. I like that. Oh, no, I want to do. So we need to say, God, help me to run the race you have marked out. And all of this is just beginning this one thing. To run the race, we need encouragement. To run the race, we need discipline. To run the race, we need focus. And that sole focus is Jesus. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Not who we want Jesus to be, but as Scripture has revealed him. Jesus, let me dig into your word so I may know you better. God, this is why I want to come and hear a message on, on Sunday or Wednesday or maybe one on the radio or something like that, because I want to know you better. I want to take time in my own quiet time so I can read and see you in Scripture and know you better. I need to fix my eyes on you because, listen, listen, when my eyes are not fixed, I'm just like Isaiah walking in and going, this is, he died, Isaiah, Uzziah died, what's going to happen? Oh. Until I saw the Lord. And he's on the throne. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Yes, there's things to do. Yes, there are things to plan. But let's never stray from fixing our eyes. And it says this. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He's the one who perfectly planned the race and then perfectly ran the race. Listen, he knows what's best for us. I mean, have you ever been to that saying, God, what are you doing? <laughs> he knows what's best. He knows the obstacles that are on the course. He knows what it will take. But this the last little point on here is his course, because he perfectly planned and then he ran, his course was infinitely more difficult than ours. His race required him to leave the glories of heaven. His race required him to experience things that, that, that we experience, but he's God. He didn't have to experience them. The griefs of this world, the sorrows of this world. But then ultimately, his race led him to the cross where he died for my sin and yours. 
He is the author and the perfecter. He ran the race perfectly. How did Jesus do it? Two things. One, he focused on us. I mean, you know, if we're supposed to focus on Jesus, what does Jesus focus on? One of his focuses was, was on us, our gain and not his shame, not what he was going through. He says, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, saying, listen, I don't care about the shame that I'm going through and the pain I'm going through and all the things that are bad about this. I am focused on the joy, and the joy is salvation is being provided for mankind if they would believe. His joy was seeing all those who would believe on him. How did Jesus do it? He focused on us and he focused on the Father. He was obedient to the Father, even to the point of death and death on the cross. And when he died on the cross, three on the third day, he rose again and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In the same way, Fix our eyes on Jesus. When our race is difficult, and it will be, remember him. It says this in verse 3. Consider him. The word there literally means think about it logically. <laughs> think about it. Ponder over it again and again and again. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men. Consider that, yes, there, there was suffering, but there was, it, was, it was a momentary suffering for the greater good. For when we remember what he did, we are encouraged to do as we should. When we remember that he went to the cross for us, that, that he, he obeyed the Father, that his race was so much more difficult, yet he's saying, I'm with you. Keep your eyes on me. Because there's going to be days you feel like giving up. Look to him. There's going to be days when you'd rather take the easy way in parenting. Fix your eyes on Jesus. When divorce seems like the only option, look to Jesus. When shining your light at work causes too much friction, look to Jesus. When you're struggling with giving, look to Jesus. When, when worries seem only to multiply, look to Jesus. When you're scared of going out to witness, because yes, we're going to go there in a couple weeks uh, talking about that so we can do that, look to Jesus. When you look around and see there's so many gaps in this room, look to Jesus. When we're going, who can we get to do the children's ministry here? And who can we get to do a youth ministry? And who can we... Da, 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 da? Look to Jesus. He will guide us. The example of Peter is so like us. The relationship of Peter and Jesus started at a seashore, and Jesus said, this is how simple it is. Follow me. That's our walk. If you are a believer in Christ, you are to be a follower of Christ. Now, I want to say, it's not always easy. It's like a, a you know, a uh, uh, follow the leader game, that that, that person who, who can, you know, do all sorts of things you can't do. But, but anyway, he says, follow me. 
And, G and, and Peter started following Christ, and he followed him this way and that way and all that, and he opened his mouth too many times and stuff, but, but he still followed Jesus. One time, Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter said, if it's really you, command me. And I'll put it in these two words, to follow you there too. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. Fixing his eyes on Jesus, he's now doing what he couldn't do. We need our church to be able to do what we can't do. I wish the end of the story was there. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Listen, listen, this is why it is so important to fix our eyes and keep fixing and day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, fixing our eyes as individuals, as families, as a church. Jesus, I'm following you and where I'm following you, I couldn't do this without you. What happens in the middle of that when we get distracted? And we do. We start to sink. And we're like, Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you start looking at all the issues and the problems? Oh, look at that wave. Look at the wind. He stopped looking at Jesus. And so I want to conclude this message for a time for you to ask Jesus to help you. Maybe it'll be a time of prayer that is confession of saying, God, this is the sin. Maybe it's a time of, of, of God, what is, what is that path? Now listen, this is, this is a prayer I want you to begin here, but I, I want you to be praying this whole week as God leads you to say, I need to run the race. God, who can be my encouragers in this race? God, God, help me with the discipline for this race, but ultimately, help me fix my eyes. And so the way the service, I'm going to ask, ask Cynthia to play. You don't have to come forward to pray. But maybe you want to come and bow at this altar. Now, I know some are physically, un if, you, if you went down at the altar, you wouldn't get up, you know, stuff like that. I, I encourage you, if it's not difficult, to even come to the front pew and, and just sit there and pray. But I'd like for our church to focus on him. And one of the ways we fix our eyes on Jesus is coming to him in prayer. So I'm going to conclude with prayer. But I want you just to, for, for a brief time to say, God, Father, in your name, in the Son, in your Son's name, help me. Help me. I'm so distracted. Help me to fix my eyes. Help me to run when I don't feel like running. Father, help our church as a whole to fix our eyes on Jesus and then from there to be able to say, Jesus, how do we solve some of these problems? But we start and end with you. So Jesus, I pray. I pray in this moment of prayer, but God, I pray that you put on the heart of believers that are here today, you put on their heart Throughout this week, help me. Help 
us to fix our eyes on you. And so a brief time, if you would like to come forward, for you and you and God alone, God, I pray. Again, if it's too difficult at the, to come down to the altar, at the, at the, maybe this front pew to sit at, but would you come now and say, Jesus, I'm not only praying for me, but I'm praying for our church. And again, I know there's some that is too physically difficult. And you can pray if you need to where you are. I'm not looking and judging for that, okay? But would you come now and pray? individuals, as families. Help us run the race. Your plan, it couldn't be better than your plan. But help us be focused as, as Cynthia's been playing. Be thou my vision. Be our vision, Jesus. receive the glory. We're going to close our service with the song we sang earlier, To God Be the Glory. <laughs>